Today I'm going to show you how to do non-destructive editing using smart objects in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to DVW Learn. My name is Amandeep Singh. If you're working with multiple images and making them larger or smaller, you'll learn this in no time that transform command is a destructive command. I have my layers panel open and you will see this image on the top left is selected in my layers panel. If I go to edit, transform and scale and make it smaller by dragging one of the corner handles, and accept the transformation by clicking on the tick mark on the top right. Now if I change my mind and try to make it larger again by pressing Ctrl T on my keyboard and dragging one of the corner handles to make it bigger, you will see that this image looks pathetic now. So what did just happen? When you scale down your image, Photoshop throws away all the extra pixels that he does not need to represent smaller version of that image. But when you make it larger again, Photoshop tries to make up those extra pixels or extra information to show that larger view. Now we are going to convert this layer into a smart object. So let's just quickly undo what we have done and then we will convert this layer into a smart object to see the second non-destructive workflow. I will press Ctrl Z to step back one time and then Ctrl Alt Z to step back again in history and you'll find these commands sitting here in the edit menu. So let's go back to the layers panel again and I still have the same layer selected which is the one on the top left. If I do a right click and say convert to smart object, you will see an obvious change in the thumbnail here there is an icon reflecting that this is a smart object now. And this is how you can find out which one of these is a smart object. Now if I go through the same transformation again, you will see a difference. If I go to edit, transform and scale again and use one of the corner handles to scale down the image to a smaller version and hit the tick mark to accept the transformation. And again, go to Edit, Transform and Scale to make it bigger. You will see that it's definitely better than what we had before. So what is really happening? When you scale down to a smaller image, it just shows you a low resolution preview, but still retain the high resolution file in it. And scaling up again, uses those stored pixels to enlarge the image without losing the quality. Now there are a few benefits and few downsides of it. Obvious benefit is the flexibility of doing non-destructive edits which includes scale, skew, rotate and much more. However, there are two major downsides. You would not be able to use the commands that work on a pixel, for example, paintbrush, dodge, burn, etc. You would need to open the content of smart object to do so. And we will talk about that in a moment. And the second downside that I see is the larger file size. Since smart objects keep all the information, irrespective of how much it's going to use, which increases the overall size of the file. So the bottom line is that smart objects can be avoided when you know that there are no further changes required and bulky file with a problem. As I said before, you cannot use any command which work on pixels directly and make changes to smart objects. But that's not truly really right. There's a way to use those commands and make changes to the smart object as well. So if I use paintbrush, and try and paint on the smart object here, you will see I get a cross saying this is not possible. However, if I choose the layer at the bottom, which is a raster layer, and I'll unlock that by clicking on the lock icon. And now if I try and paint on this, you will see I'm able to paint on this layer. 
However, if I'll go back to the smart object again and try and paint on this, it doesn't let me do that. So in order to make changes to the smart object, I can edit the content and make changes. I will go to the smart object layer and do a right click and say edit contents. The layer will open up in its respective software. For example, this was an image layer. It opened up in Photoshop itself. Had it been a vector layer, it would have opened in Adobe Illustrator. Now I will use the paintbrush again and just paint on the image to change the look and feel of this picture and I will close and save the file. Once I go back to my main document, you will see that those changes have been reflected. When you save the changes to the source content, the edits appear in the smart object in the main Photoshop document as well. There are basically two types of smart objects. One is embedded smart object which is shown by this icon in layers panel and second is linked smart object which is reflected by this icon in layers panel and where you do not see any of these two icons in layers panel will represent the normal raster layer like this. What we have just learned is a type of embedded smart object. In the next tutorial video, we will learn how these two types are different from each other and how linked smart objects can save your life in difficult times. That's all from me about smart objects. I'll catch you up again in my next video on linked smart objects. Guys, if you like this video and want to see more of this kind, please hit subscribe below. If you have any questions or want to request any specific topic to be included in the next video, please leave your comments below and I'll take it from there. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.